Good afternoon and welcome to this Good Friday Tenebrae service and observance of the seven last words of Christ on the cross. The Tenebrae is the 12 candles, 13 candles, that are lit up front, each one representing one of the disciples, the candle in the middle representing Christ, the last one to be extinguished. And the seven last words of Jesus are taken from all of the four Gospels. To get seven, not one Gospel has all seven in them. So we'll be jumping around from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And thank you, Bob, for being our reader this afternoon. Uh, please join in singing the hymn after I sing the last word. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God. We ask you to look with mercy on your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be given over to the hands of sinners and to suffer death on the cross, who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Two others also, who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with Jesus. When they came to the place that is called the Skull, they crucified him there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Let us pray. As we recall the events of your death and remember the darkness of that day, we ask that you take away any darkness in our lives, in our hearts, and in our minds. Remove the veils of guilt, hopelessness, and fear, that we will see the glory you bring to each of us and the world through your faithfulness. Lord, in your mercy, and the people stood by, watching. But the leaders scoffed at Jesus, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine, and saying, 
If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him. This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus replied, Today shalt thou be with me. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, remember us when you come to your kingdom. Remember us not for our impressive accomplishments, nor for the virtues we occasionally display. Remember us as those who struggle to remain faithful, who desire to speak well of you with our lives. Remember us as those in need of your benediction and grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, They took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what the scripture says. They divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman! 
Behold thy son, behold thy mother. Let us pray. O oh, blessed Savior, conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, as you cared for your family then, continue to care for your family now. Bring your community together so that we may support one another in all our needs. May we especially be the source of your compassion for those who are mourning for the widows, and for any who have no one to care for them. Lord, in your mercy. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why hast thou
Let us pray. Holy God, you always hear our cries and listen to our sorrows. We trust in your promise that you will never forsake us. And so we confess to you those times when we have forsaken others and ask that you strengthen us in our faithfulness to your word. Lord, in your mercy. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. Let us pray. O blessed Savior, you never leave us hungry or thirsting, but fill our souls by the invitation to your table and your presence. As we are fed by you, let us not forget to provide for the needs of our neighbors, giving drink to the thirsty, food to the hungry, treatment to the ill, love to the forgotten, and forgiveness to the repentant. Lord, in your mercy, hear our A jar full of sour wine was standing there, so they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is
Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you finished the work you were sent to do. Now enable us by your Holy Spirit to be faithful to our call to accomplish the work you have called us to do. Do not let us grow complacent or weary in the face of all that needs to be done. Give us the confidence to work in the hope that you will bring all good works to their fulfillment on that great day when you return in the fullness of your glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, while the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into thy hands I commend my But saying this, Jesus breathed his last. Behold, when the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God and said, Certainly, this man was innocent. 
And when all the crowds who had gathered there for this spectacle saw what had taken place, they returned home, beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance, watching these things. Now there was a good and righteous man named Joseph, who, though a member of the council, had not agreed to their plan and action. He came from the Jewish town of Arimathea, and he was waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then he took it down, wrapped it in a linen cloth, and laid it in a rock-hewn tomb where no one had ever been laid. It was the day of preparation, and the Sabbath was beginning. The women who had come with him from Galilee followed, and they saw the tomb and how his body was laid. Then they returned and prepared spices and ointments.
Let us pray, brothers and sisters, for the Holy Church of God throughout the world, that God, the Almighty Father, guide it and gather it together so that we may worship him in peace and tranquility. Almighty and eternal God, you have shown your glory to all nations in Jesus Christ. Guide the work of the church. Help it to preserve in faith. Proclaim your name and bring salvation to people everywhere. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for our presiding bishop, Eaton, and for our synodical bishop, Eggensteiner, for all pastors and other ministers, for all the servants of the church, and for all other people of God. Almighty and eternal God, your spirit guides the church and makes it holy. Strengthen and uphold our pastors and our leaders. Keep them in health and safety for the good of the church and help each of us to do faithfully the work to which you have called us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Let us pray for those who are preparing for baptism, that God makes them responsive to his love and gives them new life in Jesus Christ. Almighty and eternal God, you continually bless the church with new members. Increase the faith and understanding of those preparing for baptism. Give them a new birth as your children and keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Let us pray for all our brothers and sisters who share our faith in Jesus Christ, that God may gather and keep together in one church all those who know Christ as Lord. Almighty and eternal God, you give your church its unity. Look with favor on all who follow Jesus, your Son. We are all consecrated to you by our baptism. Make us one in the fullness of faith and keep us one in the fellowship of love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Let us pray for the Jewish people, the first to hear the word of God, that they may receive the fulfillment of the covenant's promises.
Almighty and eternal God. Long ago you gave your promises to Abraham and his posterity. Hear the prayers of your church, that the people you first made your own may arrive with us at the fullness of redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for all of those who do not believe in Christ, that the light of the Holy Spirit may show them the way of salvation. Almighty and eternal God, enable those who do not acknowledge Christ to receive the truth of the gospel. Help us, your people, to grow in love for one another, to grasp more fully the mystery of your Godhead, and so to become more perfect witnesses of your love in the sight of all people. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Let us pray for those who do not believe in God, that they may find him who is the author and the goal of our existence. Almighty and eternal God, you created humanity so that all might long to know you and have peace in you. Grant that, in spite of the hurtful things that stand in their way, they may all recognize in the lives of Christians the tokens of your love and mercy, and gladly acknowledge you as the one true God and Father of us all. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for those who serve in public office, that God may guide their minds and hearts, so that all of us may live in true peace and freedom. Almighty and eternal God, you are the champion of the poor and oppressed. In your goodness, watch over those in authority so that people everywhere may enjoy justice, peace, freedom, and a share in the goodness of your creation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Let us pray that God, the almighty and merciful Father, may heal the sick, comfort the dying, give safety to travelers, free those unjustly deprived of liberty, and rid the world of falsehood, hunger, and disease.
Almighty and eternal God, you give strength to the weary and new courage to those who have lost heart. Hear the prayers of all who call on you in any trouble, that they may have the joy of receiving your help in their need. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Finally, let us pray for all those things for which our Lord would have us ask. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory now and forever. Amen. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world.